Hi friends. Welcome to Pyramid Knits. My name is Liz. I am a knitter and a natural dyer. I am coming to you from my home outside of Taos, New Mexico in the southwestern United States. Um, it has been many months since I last recorded. Um, I don't have a plan today either. Oh well. <laughs> um, I finally have like my hair. Uh, I don't know, the energy and not the anxiety. Um, so I'm sitting down to record. Uh, I have been knitting a lot lately. I've been watching a lot of podcasts lately. Um, so I think that's maybe why I'm feeling a little inspired to sit down and share what I've been working on uh, because I've really been enjoying watching and seeing what other people are working on. Um, so yeah, it's been a minute. So uh, I'm not going to try and like catch up on any projects that I was working on the last time that I talked to you because I don't know what it was. Um, I actually, I even recorded a, a podcast in like January, I think, and I just never posted it because um, I just felt weird and I didn't want to. So there you go. Since it's been such a long time since I've recorded anything, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I have been knitting for, oh gosh, like 14 years about. Um, I didn't start knitting until I was in my late 20s. You can do the math on that. Um, but once I started, I couldn't stop. And there's rarely been a day that has gone by since then that I have not knit at least a few stitches. Um, there are two cats and two dogs in this house. Um, so they may make appearances. They may lay down and kick the tripod. That's what's just about to happen. He's being very cute though. Very cute. Yes. Yeah. So two dogs and two cats and a lot of knitwear in this house. Um, I'm definitely a garment knitter. I love knitting sweaters and things that I can wear. Um, that's my favorite. Of course, I knit accessories and other things too, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm always, always knitting a sweater, at least one or more. Uh, I started naturally dyeing my own yarn. Oh my God, probably like 10 years ago now, which is kind of insane. Um, I've been doing it quote unquote professionally <laughs> uh, for a few years. Um, I do have an Etsy shop if you're interested. All of that will be linked below. Uh, there's some nice yarn in there. Um, I'm still getting some things up that are in in the stash that never got listed in the shop. Um, so please do keep your eye on that. And yeah, as the weather's getting warmer, I'm gonna be dying more yarn, so that's exciting. Uh, I started spinning during uh, the pandemic. That was my 2020 birthday gift to myself was to get a spinning wheel. Um, I don't spin as often as I would like. I really enjoy it when I do, and I usually kind of go down a little bit of a spinning rabbit hole for a minute. Um, but right now I am in the knitting rabbit hole. Uh, I do have some spinning projects that are in progress, um, and I just kind of have lost steam on them for the time being. So I'm not going to be talking about any of those today, but I do spin as well. Um, I also am trying to sew my own clothes. I would say, well, I don't know. The first garment I sewed for myself was like seven or eight years ago. Um, but then I didn't sew any garments for myself for probably six years. <laughs> so I'm trying to get back into that and um, get better at that. Uh, so I have some fabric here that I can show you for my upcoming um, summer sewing projects. And what else do I do? Sometimes I crochet very, very lightly. Um, also, that's also something I'd like to get a little bit better at, make some more crochet things. Um, I'm planning on getting a loom soon, so weaving should also join uh, 
the long list of other fiber arts and crafts that I participate in. So yes. Where to begin? I'm going to begin with the sweater projects. So first of all, let's just jump right into this one. I uh, succumbed to peer pressure in my knitting group uh, to cast on for the DRK March to May knit along. Um, and that is basically you knit an Andrea Mowry pattern starting the beginning of March, ending the end of May. Um, or multiples, uh, and you either have to do a sweater or a, um, like a large shawl or something. I'm finding snags from the cats sitting on this. It's very annoying. Um, so I have decided to do the junction pullover. Um, it's a little bit of an older pattern, I think. I don't remember it coming out, but, oh, that's looking very nice on camera. Oh, look at that. Lovely. <laughs> Nice. Um, I had this lovely green yarn, uh, which is from Why Not Fibers, I believe. Yes, Why Not Fibers, a Great Lakes yarn from Traverse City, Michigan. Uh, the colorway is moss, uh, and the base the base is spry, which is a it was an interesting blend, which is why I got it. Uh, it's a polypay targi cross uh, this green yarn uh, 400 yards to 100 grams they say fingering weight but 400 yards to 100 grams is a little bit more sporty um, and this pattern is written for sport weight uh, so i'm going ahead and, and using it and it does have quite a bit of of uh, bloom to it uh, so it, it's fine um, so i had this green yarn in my stash uh, for about a year. I had actually cast on a Sari Nordland pattern, the Poet Pullover, which is really beautiful. It's got this really intricate lace all over the front and back and then plain stocking at three quarter sleeves. Um, I got about 15 rows into that thing and set it down and didn't come back to it for, well, I didn't come back to it. <laughs> I'm tearing it out in favor of this. Um, and I just thought, you know, I'm never, I'm, I made it 15 rows into this lace pattern and the actual, the physical chart itself is just large um, and kind of overwhelming and in tiny print. Um, it's from a Lane magazine, Lina magazine. It's Lane, right? Isn't it Lane? Nobody knows. Why does nobody know? <laughs> um, so yeah. I was in a situation where I was like, I'm going to need to like take this to a copy shop and like blow it up so I can see it and I can mark on it. And there was a mistake in the printed pattern for my size specifically, uh, which I figured out. And then I checked the errata online and I was like, oh, I was right. It is a mistake in the pattern. It's not mine. It's not my mistake. It was a mistake in the pattern. But anyway, that just like was an extra an extra hurdle, an extra level of frustration, and I just did not, didn't do it. I just didn't do it. Um, so this March to May did along was coming up and I was like, okay, I'm gonna find something I can use this green yarn with. So I found this junction pattern and I had enough yardage. I don't have a ton of yardage of this green, which is kind of the, the challenge, uh, but with the junction, it looked like it was gonna work as far as the yardage it listed. Um, and I am using as contrast uh, spin Cycle, Dyed in the Wool, in the colorway Pick Your Poison. It is very pretty. Uh, you can definitely see the oops, um, color change on the back side a little bit better. Hang on. Look at that. Isn't that cool? <laughs> So yeah, I still have one in the skein. Very pretty. And it is doing just like a full gradient. Um, it's not variegated at all. It's just, it's fading. Um, so yeah, I am ready to divide 
for sleeves and for the body. And I'm having a little bit of a conundrum. I think I figured it out. I'm gonna tell you guys what I'm gonna do and then next time you can see if it worked. So I just, I can't stop looking at this, it's so weird. <laughs> okay, number one, this pattern does not have short rows in it. I'm normally like a read through the pattern kind of a person. Apparently I've hit the stage of my knitting career where I don't do that anymore and I just cast things on and start knitting and I'm like, oh, I'm sure it's fine. Uh, yeah, there were no short rows in this. So I was like, I know that's gonna drive me batty. And looking at the other project pictures, it um, the neckline kind of varied from project to project. Oh, you can totally see it biasing. I'll talk about that in a minute too. Um, like some of the necklines were more open, some were a little more closed. And I know that I don't like a high neckline. I like to be able to breathe a little bit around my collarbone. Um, so I was worried about it really choking me if there were no short rows and it was just sitting even. Uh, because normally, most of the time, you will find in patterns there are short rows written uh, just right at the top of the back neck so that the back sits up higher and the front, a la this. Yeah, um, it didn't have that. So I was like, I just assumed, oh, well, they must be after the yoke because she wanted this brioche yoke to sit evenly all around the neckline. There must be short rows after the yoke. There were not short rows after the yoke. Um, so I did read ahead eventually and I was like, oh, there actually are no short rows. And one of the things I discovered with this yarn, with the, I think it's the polypay. Uh, it's very, very bouncy. It has a lot of memory. There's another cat just jumped on the table, sorry. Um, it has a lot of memory and it really like springs back into place. Um, working on the poet, swatching for the poet, I really noticed that. And um, I had to like drastically change my needle size to try and knit that pattern. Uh, I hit gauge with this one, so good. Gertie, don't like the yarn. Oh. She really loves the knitting for Olive. <laughs> it's like her favorite. Okay, so anyway, this particular yarn has a lot of memory, a lot of bounce back, and this is a folded over neckline, so it has some extra structure there. So you end up, you provisionally cast on, you knit double the length that you want for your neckline, and then you end up knitting a row with the provisional stitches together with your live stitches and it joins the neckline together. So it already has a little bit more structure. It's gonna have a little bit more cinch just because of that. I also know this particular yarn has a lot of cinch. So I was like, I need short rows because that it's gonna choke me. I'm gonna spend all of this time knitting this sweater and it's gonna choke my neck and I don't want that to happen. Um, yeah, so I added in short rows in the back. I don't know if you'll be able to see this very well because it is pretty scrunched up on the needles here. All right, so if you look at the back, this is my center back marker. So if you look here at the center back, there's one, two, three, four, five, six rows of the flea stitches. But if you come up to the front side, there's just one, two, three, four, five rows of the flea stitches. So I added in a few little extra rows here at the back. This is a marker of where I started my short rows, I think. And you like, you can't even hardly see them. You can notice it a little bit here. Look on the other side, maybe it's easier to see where it's not all the... Um, where is it? There. Is that it? <laughs> I can't even find them. Where are you, short rows? Oh, well, it's really hidden. That's great. I thought it was going to be more noticeable than, more noticeable than that. 
Um, I can't even find it. Okay, now the cats are wrestling up against the camera. That's not cool. Oh, here, here they are, here they are. I finally found it. There, you can see where the short rows kind of join in right here. And you can see the rows sort of merging there into one. Yeah, so I just put in a little extra wedge underneath the yoke on the back. So now whenever I split for sleeves, the back is gonna be one inch taller than the front. And you can kind of see it as I hold it up even, the back, whoops, the back sits just a little bit higher than the front. So my other conundrum is in splitting for the sleeves and the body. Um, I have boobs. They're pretty big. Um, I have to go back. Well, no, I'll, I'll talk about this part first and then I'll go back. See, now I'm adjusting my bra. Yeah, it's a whole thing. Um, so there's often the issue with yoke sweaters as you come down, it's just a circle coming off the top and then you have two arms coming off either side and then a tube for the body, right? Uh, so that means it's an equal amount of fabric across the front of the body as across the back of the body. But the body has more volume across the front than across the back. So a lot of times with yoke sweaters, you'll end up with like a lot of extra fabric at the back. And I don't want that to happen. Um, I considered adding short rows at the front as well to accommodate an, a little extra bust size. But since I just did the short rows at the back below the yoke, I don't want to like have a weird short row section at the back and then like a weird short row section at the front and have them competing with each other because I don't really understand logistically how that would work out. Um, so my plan is going to be to actually just put the sleeves on further back so that there will literally just be more stitches across the front of the body and less stitches across the back. I've done some math. I'm a little bit worried that it's going to be uh, extreme, but that's what the math says. And math doesn't lie, right? So that's my plan. Um, I drew out a little diagram with my inches. I figured out my stitches. Everything added up to the right numbers. <laughs> so I think I have that sorted. Um, and I will just need to, yeah, either tonight or tomorrow morning, go ahead and split for sleeves and divide the body. Um, and then this should start moving quickly. That is one of the things with yoke sweaters is whenever you get to this point, uh, you have like, yeah, I have like 421 stitches on the needles right now because it's the entire circumference all the way around your arms, all the way around the bus. Like it's the full circumference. So yeah, it's a lot of stitches. So once I get the sleeve separated, I'll start flying on the body. And I have until the end of May. So I think that should not be a problem at all. Oh, and then the one other thing I was going to talk about, I actually even filmed a quote unquote tutorial about this. Um, whenever I was doing my provisionally cast on folded over neckline, uh, I ended up dropping a whole bunch of stitches. Uh, this is a pretty sticky yarn. Uh, it's a pretty splitty yarn. I don't know if you can see here. It's got kind of a a loose spin to it. Yeah, so it's like pretty easy to, to split those plies apart with your needle. And whenever you're trying to pick up provisionally cast on stitches, which already have another piece of yarn going through them with the stitch that you already have, it gets pretty fiddly. Um, and I ended up, oh gosh, a lot of stitches off. I can't remember how many now. I think it was four, maybe it was eight. It was a lot. I noticed though, before I got to the end, 
a few inches before I got to the end. I was like, these stitch counts don't line up. I have too many stitches on one side. So I just ended up, as I was knitting the provisional side down, I would just catch like two stitches on mine every few stitches, two stitches on the current active yarn from the provisional yarn. Does that make sense? Um, and I would knit one provisional stitch into two active stitches, do a couple even, one provisional stitch into two active stitches. And I just kind of made up the difference over the last few inches. Um, but as a result, it does kind of bias. Like you can see it, it is skewing a little bit. It's like leaning to one side. <laughs> and then like, Yesterday when I was knitting on this, somehow I looked down and I was like, are you kidding me? There are two dropped stitches still on the inside of my neckline that somehow I missed through the entire process. And it's like, oh yeah, those are those will unravel. So I've caught them here with these little light bulb markers. Um, and I just am going to need to go back through and sew those down. Um, which is what I did with the other ones. So after I joined everything. I had these four, six, eight stitches, however many I had, um, that I hadn't caught. So they were just loose like this. They were dropped loose stitches. And I went through and I caught all of them with little light bulb markers. And then I just went through and I just threaded a piece of scrap yarn through and caught them and just wove them in. So I'm going to do that with these and I'm not going to worry about it because a slight biasing of the neckline that I'm not super concerned about. I think I'll be fine. I don't know. Maybe, maybe that'll drive me crazy too, but at this point, we're not going back. <laughs> we are carrying on. Yes. So this is my junction. The yoke is done. Moving on to the body. So I did a little bit of an impulse cast on. Um, side note, uh, I went up to Portland, uh, Oregon in March. I used to live up there and um, I went back to go to the Rose City Yarn Crawl. Just cause, <laughs> just cause. I got to see old friends, it was great. I got to go to all my old haunts. Like it was a really wonderful cathartic trip even. Um, and I bought a lot of yarn. The spin cycle I bought on that trip because I knew I was going to cast this on. So I knew I needed to get some spin cycle that was on the list. Um, and it occurred to me that my father's 80th birthday is coming up at the end of May. I'm sorry, the end of April. Um, and he's getting married in the middle of May. So I was like, I'm going to knit him a sweater. And that means that I can buy a sweater quantity of yarn, uh, which I went and bought a sweater quantity of Knitting for Olive Heavyweight Merino. <laughs> and I have two colors. It is, oh gosh, I don't know, actually. I'll have to like put it on the screen. I apologize. But here we are so far. I have knit two sleeves. I have almost knit two sleeves. I still need to finish the sleeve cap on the second sleeve. Um, yeah, so these are going to be set in sleeves. So it's got the whole shaping up here at the top. 
um, which I'm pretty sure I messed up on a little bit. Hi, editing Liz from tomorrow, popping in here to say I did mess up that sleeve cap pretty significantly. Um, for some reason, I just didn't track where my decreases were because I was like, I'm going to do this all in one sitting, so I'm not going to mess it up. Uh, totally did. <laughs> um, I compared it to the other sleeve that I was knitting correctly to pattern because I was actually marking where I was doing my decreases and counting like a good little knitter. Um, and the correct sleeve was like a good two or three inches longer than the wrong one and shaped much better. Uh, so I went back this morning and I ripped out uh, the sleeve cap on the first sleeve and I re it. They're now both done. They're ready to be blocked. We're back in business. Yeah, so what can I say about this? Uh, this is a pattern out of an Interweave Knits magazine from like 2018 or something. Um, it's called the Arkansas River Pullover. Uh, it's in an issue, like it's all like Southwestern type inspired designs. Um, and my dad is a sucker for anything kitschy and Southwest. So this, it just seems like him. So it's this nice, cozy, oversized pullover. Um, and it's got like a little Henley collar, but it's like a little shawl collar that kind of turns over at the top, which is real cute. Um, yeah, I will say like, it's a, I don't normally knit from print magazines, especially, um, if I'm knitting out of a print pattern, it's usually out of a book, um, you know, that's been specialty published by that author. I don't know. Um, but I don't usually knit patterns out of magazines and I will have to say that the grading definitely leaves something to be desired. Um, there's not a whole lot of sizes and it's just kind of like big jumps in between the sizes. There's not a whole lot of subtle gradation, right? Uh, so I am kind of winging it. <laughs> uh, I've cast on a smaller size sleeve than uh, the body size because, so this is like a st 10 stitch repeat, this little color work motif. Um, so to keep this in pattern, the sleeve sizes just go up by 10 stitches, which is like a huge jump. <laughs> Um, so I kept casting on the size that it was supposed to be. And it was just like this, I'm like, I know this is like a man's sweater, but it was just like hanging off, like just huge around my wrist. And it's like, there is no way, there is no way. So I ended up casting on the smaller size. Um, I have also had to go down a needle size, I believe. Um, and I'm liking this fabric now. And this seems to be a good good size. Like I keep trying it on. I'm like, yeah, that's like nice and loose on me. That feels real comfy. And that goes up to my shoulder and like down over my hand a little bit. So that should be, that should be just about right. Just about right. I think. Um, yeah. So the plan is going to be once I am done knitting both of these, I'm going to go ahead and block them so that I can properly measure the gauge that I'm getting on this needle size um, because I did not re-swatch after I didn't get gauge. Um, I just said, I know I'm gonna have to go down at least a needle size. And then like, I had to pick a whole totally different pattern size for the sleeve anyway. So uh, yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and block these, get that out of the way. I can measure my proper gauge size on this size seven needle, it was supposed to be on a size eight. Um, and then I can cast on the appropriate body size. And then hopefully everything's gonna work out just fine. <laughs> so it is currently April the 3rd. Yes, April the 3rd. Um, his birthday is April 24th. Two sleeves done just the body to go. It's knitting, it's knitting up pretty quickly. Like it's on a pretty big needle. It's knitting up pretty quickly. 
If I didn't have all of these other projects going at the same time, it would definitely be done. Ow, Conan, no, ow. Oh, he's stealing my knitting for all of them too. The cats really like this. <laughs> they really like this yarn. So those are my two active sweater whips. Now I have a couple active accessory whips. First up is a brioche hat. So I started working on this, I don't know, a couple months ago at my knit group, I just needed, I needed something to use this yarn with. I'm gonna adjust you a little bit, the light. Oh, I love this thing. There, that's better. That's more helpful. Um, I needed something to use this yarn. Uh, this is Lavender Loon yarn. It's also from up in Minnesota, I believe. Um, I bought this and also the Why Not Fibers, this green yarn, uh, when I was up in Chicago last year, about this time. Um, also on a yarn buying spree. <laughs> uh, yeah, and this, it's just a beautiful color. Like, it's, it's the subtlety and the dye and the variation and the color is just gorgeous. Um, I think the colorway was called Spice or Spiced. I can't remember. Um, so I was having a really hard time trying to figure out what to make out of this. And I finally just ended up doing plain brioche. Just a brioche hat. Which I don't have a lot of experience with brioche. And it just seemed like the perfect thing for this yarn because it just shows off the color so much. Every time I pull this out and I'm working on it, I get comments on the color. <laughs> it's, it's really pretty. Um, so yeah, I wanted to get a little bit better at brioche. And I don't know if I had already decided I was going to cast this on or if that was after I started this hat. But definitely I was like, oh, I'm knitting on this brioche hat. So I'm getting used to brioche, which this also is a brioche yoke. So I felt much more confident casting on a brioche sweater after having knit on this in the round a bunch, a round and round with just one color. I will say it took me a long time to figure out how to do the join <laughs> at the beginning of round correctly. Can you see what a mess that is down here? It's just do, 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 it's all over the place. And then I finally got the hang of it here and now it looks normal. <laughs> so I'm glad I had this to practice on um, before I moved on to the sweater. However, I will say that figuring out what to do at the beginning of the round is way easier with two color brioche than it is with one color brioche. I don't know why, but it just makes a whole lot more sense. Um, so yeah, this is just kind of the project that's sitting in my bag and whenever I go out, I'll pull it out and knit a few stitches. Um, I had a doctor's appointment yesterday, so you can see I stopped midway across because they called my name. So <laughs> it went back in the bag. So yeah, it, it, this is just going. Um, I'll probably need to go a few more inches before I'm ready to start decreases. Maybe not. But yeah, I could probably start decreases pretty soon. Aw, cute. I like it. <laughs> oh, my hair looked so gray when I took it off. God. Oh. And my other mindless, I'm waiting. Um, I'm in a Zoom call. Sucks. They're almost done. <laughs> I am doing a... Uh, DRK everyday socks for these. Um, I have totally jumped on the bandwagon for those socks. They're two by two rib all the way, which is like kind of insane and a little bit annoying, but they fit really well. Um, so I, I keep finding the last few times that I have cast on a sock, um, I've kind of thought like, oh, what, 
you know, what do I, what do I want to do? Do I want to just do like a three by one rib? Do I want to do a two by two rib? Um, do I want to do plain vanilla? And I just find myself, I keep gravitating towards the DRK, uh, which has a flegal heel, which is really fun. Um, yeah, you do some increases there and then you do like a quick turn and then decrease everything out. So you just have this little wedge there in the back at the heel and carry on. Boop, boop. I thought he was inside. How did my dog get outside? Very confused right now. I swear to God, like, as I was sitting here talking to you guys, he was on the couch asleep. And I don't remember letting him out, but he's definitely outside. My back door is open. That's right. I forgot I had been um, up potting all of my little veggie starts. Uh, so I had my back door propped open. I forgot it's still open. <laughs> That's how you get outside. All right. I don't feel so crazy anymore. Um, well, I have one more thing I was going to show you, which is the fabric for my next sewing project. Uh, but there's a cat laying on it. So I'm going to have to make her move. Sorry, Grady. Excuse me. Excuse me, I have to show the people this cute fabric. <laughs> Isn't it so cute? I'm gonna make a citrus shirt. So it's this, I picked this up at Joanne like last summer, it's just been sitting around. Um, it feels super, super soft. It's a nice stretchy knit fabric um, with just this fun print. So I am going to sew the Seamwork Rio top. Um, I was kind of debating which one I should do, uh, but this top has a little bit more ease, more of a relaxed fit. It's got a scoop neck. Um, it's got a cute little split hem at the side. It does have what they call, um, I think they call it a gentle high-low hem or a subtle high-low hem. There's nothing subtle or gentle about this high-low hem. I'm definitely not gonna make it that dramatic. <laughs> Maybe just a little bit. I do like the, the little slit on the side. That's cute. Um, so yeah, I'm going to make myself a cute little summer scoop neck citrus knit top. So excited. I also have this really cute fabric. I'm going to make the cat move again. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Gertie. Oh, sorry. I'm not totally sure what I'm going to make out of this yet. Um but some cute little summer top. So it's this nice little crisp cotton with um, cotton white with this white print. So it's like a white on white. So it's real subtle. Um, but yeah, uh, so I have a subscription to Seamwork because um, I keep forgetting to cancel it. But they have a lot of <laughs> beginner friendly patterns. <laughs> so there's a couple cute little blouses. Um, with some cute, you know, detailed necklines and things or cute details on the sleeves uh, that I'll end up using this for, but I'm not quite sure yet. But next up is gonna be the citrus, the citrus shirt. <laughs> Y'all, there's probably more. Um, but frankly, the sun is starting to come in this window next to me and it's getting really hot sitting in the spot. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. Um, do stick around because last week I went on a hot air balloon ride and it was amazing. And I'm going to put the footage after this. So please enjoy. Um, hopefully it won't be so long until I join you next time. Fingers crossed. My anxiety stays at bay, y'all so that I can manage to sit down in front of a camera and post it on the internet. Uh, thanks for joining me. <laughs> I'll see you guys next time.